Praise the Lord. Well, this is the second in a series of teaching about healing, healing part two. Uh, in healing part one, we dealt with or showed that uh, healing, the word for healing, in the New Testament is sozo, which is the same word as saved. You know, believe on the Lord Jesus and your ho you and your house shall be saved. Um, so they showed that healing is also the same word in Matthew. So let's take a look at what we're going to do here in part two. Part two we're going to talk about uh, spiritual warfare. Uh, spiritual warfare, we were divi I'm divided that up into several sections because of the length of information. <coughs> it's not so much the the simplicity of it but rather the information is so much that it shows how simple spiritual warfare really is. Um, there's a great battle being waged in the spiritual war, you know, spiritual world. Uh, it's a personal battle between flesh and spirit. It's a social battle, uh, greatly influenced by the evil forces of the world. It's a spiritual battle with evil supernatural powers. In Old Testament times, a trumpet was used to summon God's people to battle. Today, a spiritual summons is sounding throughout the nations of the world. It is a summons to the invisible war. God is calling his people to arms. Now, if you're not involved in uh, standing your ground in spiritual warfare, there is no neutral party. If you're a neutral party, you're on the wrong side. It's that simple. The Bible states that God's people are destroyed because of a lack of knowledge. That's in Hosea 4.6. One of the areas in which believers are defeated due to the lack of knowledge is in this invisible warfare. The sooner we recognize and prepare for this war, the sooner we experience victory. The primary aspect of this invisible war targets the soul and spirit of man in order for to be greatly influence our soul satan has targeted the physical bodies of believers because he knows that the weak and sickly warriors have great difficulty in waging an effective battle against his kingdom he wants to make as many as he can sick in old testament times fiery darts were used as a weapon of warfare they were set on fire and then shot from bows over the walls of cities to thatched roofs within. That's in Ephesians 6 verses 11 through 17. Paul describes the spiritual battle with Satan. He speaks of the fiery darts of the wicked. Fiery darts, same thing as in the Old Testament where they shot the arrows over the city's walls. Paul describes the spiritual battle with Satan. He speaks of those fiery darts of the wicked. The enemy continuously hurls those fiery darts at us in the form of thoughts. The enemy continuously hurls that. He, we enter the battle by dealing with the thoughts that come our way. And God gives us the ability to bring every thought into captivity. 2 Corinthians 10 verse 5 reads, or tells us that Paul also warns, that we should not be soon shaken in mind. In 2 Thessalonians 2.2, 2, uh, we see that as well. So if you can take hold of something and shake it, you have a gr good deal of control over it. Satan wants to shake or exert control over our minds. In the Greek, shake means to agitate, disturb, topple, and destroy. Hebrews 12.27 indicates that whatever can be shaken in your life will be shaken. The foundation or anchor in our minds must be the Word of God, which cannot be shaken. If by the Spirit we discipline our mind to focus on the Word of God, it enables us to remain stable and fixed. In this way, we're not blown about by every wind of doctrine that comes our way. You know, a side note here, there are many blessed people of God who are missing out on God's best because they refuse to stay planted in a local church. 
the way of the Lord always leads us to accountability. Uh, firstly, we're to be accountable to God and His Word, and secondly, accountable to His appointed leadership. Well, that's found in the churches. The local church with a pastor is God's way of nurturing, developing, strengthening, and maturing. His promise to those planted in His house is that their ministries will spring up, break forth, and flourish. Some choose to go it alone because they've been hurt or disappointed by someone or something, and so they never learn to really enjoy the strength, the comfort, and joy that comes from the camaraderie of fellowship in a home church environment. Fear that someone will control or restrict their ministry is nothing more than a root of bitterness which has taken hold because of immaturity or misunderstanding. Beloved, let God plant you and give you beauty for ashes and the oil of joy for mourning. Once you're planted, stay planted. After we're born again, it is important to stay in fellowship with our God through Jesus by the Holy Spirit. When we're out of fellowship with God, our soul stands there trying to figure out which way to go and usually ends up going the wrong direction because it's used to cooperating with the body under the influence of the old nature. The term flesh refers to the soul's cooperation with the body to the exclusion of the spirit. A spiritual man is produced when the soul cooperates with the Spirit of God, living in your spirit, giving the body only what it rightfully needs. See? Hallelujah. So, a spiritual man, hallelujah, the, the, the soul cooperates with the spirit. In the natural man, the body controls the soul, and control, and which controls the spirit. In the spiritual man, the spirit controls the soul, which controls the body. The soul enables us to function in both the material and spiritual realms. The soul allows the human spirit to operate in a physical body, like the transmission in a car allows the engine to transfer power to the wheels. If our soul cooperates with the flesh, we are walking in the flesh. If our soul cooperates with our spirit, we will walk in the Spirit. Every person alive is a resident of one or the other of two kingdoms, the kingdom of Satan or the kingdom of God. Romans 6.16 6, reads, do you, not, or do you not know that to whom you present yourselves slaves to obey, you are that one's slaves whom you obey? We make that choice in our soul. Who will you serve today? You know, in, in the book, The Human Spirit, written by Kenneth Hagin, on page 10, paragraph 5, it reads, Those who are living in the flesh are living in unbelief and always are engaged in warfare. Life is a battle for them. Their minds never have been renewed with the Word of God, and they don't know that Jesus already has won the battle. They don't know the devil is a defeated foe. They still are trying to fight him in their own power, and some have fought until they are totally exhausted and depleted. Judson Cornwall, which I had the pleasure of meeting, uh, in his book, The Best of Judson Cornwall, page 77, paragraph 2, reads, In addition to righteousness, God's kingdom is a kingdom of peace. God's kingdom has already conquered. It is not engaged in warfare. Unfortunately, many groups of Christians do not recognize this and are continually seeking to conquer territory for God. They engage in spiritual war games and march in mock battles, but God's kingdom is amply secure. Oh my! So a lot of these things that, that you see people do are really just spinning their wheels. Stand in faith. Mankind is not some pawn in a giant cosmic chess game. God has given mankind the ability to choose, and in choosing, we've rebelled against God. The question now is whether or not man will be restored to God and learn to live in agreement with him. Satan operates as a catalyst for man's rebellion, and because man chose to disobey God, the enemy now holds significant power over the flesh. Our major battles in life are not to be against people and are never visible. 
They are against invisible demonic spirits whom we are expected to resist. We resist by first submitting to the Lordship of Jesus. Put the flesh to death. Crucify it. In Galatians 5.24 it says, And they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. James 4, 7 reads, Submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. So the first part, submit yourself to God. Galatians 2, 20 reads, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Did you know that the battle is not between love and hate. It's between love and lethargy, which is the same as apathy and indifference. Love is basically an action, whereas hate is more of an attitude. The real battle in this case is between walking in the spirit and walking in the flesh. First, the battle is not between God and Satan. It's, it is between those who have submitted themselves to God and those who have rebelled against him because are both angels and mankind. God has no enemies that pose a threat to him. Understand that? God has no enemies that pose a threat to him. There is no one even remotely capable of challenging or resisting God against his will. He is stronger than anyone or anything that opposes him. Remember, Satan is just a creation. God is the creator. The battle is between those who have submitted to God and those who are in rebellion against him. Simply put, the battle is between submission and rebellion. Remember, if you obey Satan to sin, then you are his slave. Again, Romans 6.16 Know you not to whom you yield yourself servants to obey, his servants you are to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. Satan lost ownership of you when you became a citizen of heaven and part of the kingdom of God. Colossians 1.13 reads, Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son. 1 Corinthians 15.50 reads, Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Romans 14.17 For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. 1 Corinthians 4.20 For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. After losing you, Satan will likely do what he can to destroy your faith in God. This is usually when we take notice of the battle. Spiritual warfare begins in the soul, literally in the mind. This is the battlefield on which most spiritual warfare is fought, in your mind. The mind is the part of our being where thoughts, intellect, reasoning, understanding and remembering takes place. The fight we are in is to struggle to stay in faith. Do not allow yourself to fall in doubt. You know Hebrews 11:6 says, "But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him." If you doubt, you cannot ask in faith. James 1, 6 says, But let him ask in faith nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. When the disciples of Jesus were tossed about during a storm in the sea, and Jesus came walking on the water, Peter tried to walk on the water, but sank. What did Jesus say? Matthew fourteen thirty one. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him, and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? God wants us to walk on the sea of trouble in faith. First Timothy 6.12 reads, Fight the good fight of faith. 
lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. Romans 14.23 And he that doubteth is damneth if he eat, because he eateth not of, of faith, for whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Hebrews 4 verses 9 to 11 reads, Therefore remaineth there a rest to the people of God. For he that entereth into his rest, he also has ceased from his own works, as God did from his. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. Wow, amazing, huh? God is amazing. The word labor in that particular scripture where it says, Let us labor to enter in. That word labor and the word unbelief in this scripture shows the struggle of entering in to that rest by faith. The Bible clearly shows us how to deal with all aspects of life. Learning the discipline of training our mind to follow after and obey the word of God in scripture will guarantee our success and skill in warfare. Proverbs 6 verse 23 in the King James Version reads, For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light, and reproofs of instruction are the way of life. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. You know, complete, the complete Jewish Bible reads, For the mitzvah is a lamp, Torah is light, and reproofs that discipline are the way of life. Praise God. 2 Timothy 1.7 reads, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. Oh my. In the uh, American Standard Version, it reads, For God gave us not a spirit of fearfulness, but of power and of love and discipline. There's several uh, versions that have self-discipline written. And the word there with th that is self uh, g4995 which is uh safromnos or no sorry sapromnismos for no for no bleh. <laughs> oh praise god i'm not a, a greek scholar i just know i'm trying to read it uh it, it under it means self discipline or control and admonishing or calling to soundness of mind to moderation and self control this non-violent, understand what it just said, this non-violent discipline of faith is the answer to all difficulties in life. Yes, we're, we're to be violent in faith, but not physically, not in the soul, not with our mouth speaking against anyone. This non-violent discipline of faith is the answer to all difficulties in life. This means we don't fight against people, either physically, emotionally, or with our words against them. Our struggle to stay in faith is against principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, and spiritual wickedness in high places. This is not a struggle against people. Ephesians 6.12 says so. It reads, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, and against the rulers of darkness of this world and against spiritual wickedness in high places. So please understand that just as a skilled fighter must train, so we too must train our minds with the Word of, the word of God while exercising our faith. Well, that was the first part of, part of this particular section, part two the first part of the healing uh, in the spiritual warfare section okay hallelujah and we'll continue on after this uh, with our next video and we'll talk about the two different kinds of minds as described in scripture praise the Lord and God bless you let me pray for you Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray for those listening. I ask that you would fill our hearts with joy. Make us to know that we already have the victory that we're seeking. 
make us to know that we've gotten that victory through Jesus Christ and not by our own efforts, not by our own strength, but simply by trusting in your word and standing in faith, believing you. We thank you, Father, for giving us the victory through Jesus, and we thank you for opening the way where there was no way before. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Hallelujah and amen. I look forward to seeing you again. Hallelujah.